My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is November 19th, 2021. The Thanksgiving special episode. The Black Friday special episode. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining me today, especially my lovely co-hosts, chat. <sighs> say hello to YouTube. Say hello to YouTube and say goodbye to your dislike button. We'll talk about that in a minute. <gasps> Boy, it's been a week. Boy, it's been a week. Man, I think we should probably, usually I try to lead off with something that's like, you know, a medium story, just to kind of get the crowd hyped up a little bit, right? But man, we just got to jump right into it. This is, a, this is a continuation of the ongoing bullshit that's going on with Activision Blizzard King. Um, specifically revolving around, of course, Bobby Kotick, the uh, CEO of Activision, um, uh, uh, and of course, the allegations, investigations, uh, and all the allegations that have surfaces, surfaced uh, related to sexual uh, harassment, misconduct, and all of that that's happened at Blizzard uh, for the past, like, forever, basically. Um, <laughs> it just keeps on getting deeper. It just, just, it just keeps, you think, you think, oh man, it doesn't get any lower than this. And then it's just like, <laughs> it just goes a little bit deeper. And you know why? Because it keeps going higher up. Like it just, it's like, it start first. It was like, oh yeah, it was like a lead dev or something. And then it was like, oh shit. Was like somebody in like executive level, like involved. And then it was like, oh shit. It's the fucking top. It's the fuck. Yeah, I need a Randy. I need a Randy button with Poppy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Bobby. <laughs> I sounded fucking terrible. <laughs> yes, I do need one though. Um, so, where do we start? Well, let's start with the, with the story that uh, uh, that uh, kicked everything off this week. It was a huge investigation um, done by the Wall Street Journal, uh, where they went. They got tons and tons of um, that doesn't look at all like what I see. <laughs> What is that? Why is the video split? <laughs> Whoa! That's new! <laughs> we'll just cut this part out. <clears throat> what was I saying? <laughs> so as the headline states, it says Activision CEO Bobby Kotick uh, has knew for years about sexual misconduct allegations at video game giants aka activision blizzard uh so um it is more than just that like that's just what they what they decided to put in the headline but there's like a million different stories all of them with completely different headlines of course relating to the same core thing uh but all of this stems from one insanely in-depth uh investigative journalist report um uh, done by, uh, I, forget, I forget her name, Kristen Grant, Ben Fritz, and Sarah uh, Nealman um, uh, at the Wall Street Journal. So, Bobby Kotick knew and actually went as far as to cover up uh, and withhold information from shareholders uh, that there was uh, uh, sexual misconduct and uh, allegations being made uh, with executives. And he actually covered up for them, like intervened, covered up for them uh, as the investigation, as the uh, report here uh, alleges. Um, <clears throat> also, it shows that, uh, and I guess reminds us that back in 2006 or something, uh, that uh, Bobby left a, a voicemail with, uh, uh, with an assistant threatening to have her killed. And then later settled, uh, and then uh, a, re a representative says that they that he deeply regrets making those comments and using those th th that tone and all that. Um, I don't. <laughs> sure, sure, I know. Sure, exactly. Some of my favorite bits, including threatening and having an employee killed. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so. Yeah, it says he apologized. Mr. Cutter quickly apologized 16 years ago. The actors, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, this he deeply regrets the comments. Deeply. Like those heartwarming stories. Exactly. Uh, so at least we know that kind of a shithead like from the beginning. You know, like, uh, I don't know if at any point, I mean, a lot of times we look at things that we did, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and we're like, oh, it was a different time then. Oh, it was a different time then, you know? But I remember 2006. <laughs> I would never call up, like, I don't know, uh, one of my cashiers or something, right? And it's just like, while I was working at CompuSense, I would never call up one of my cashiers and threaten to have them killed. You know, there's just no, there's no real good basis for that. There's no, just, just, just. so yeah, 2006 was not that different a time where death threats were just kind of, just, just, so, so yeah, you know, we, we, we just messing around. This is how we talk. No, 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 no. Um, deeply regret, regret, exactly. Um, so, when we discovered that, again, as part of that WSJ uh, investigative journalism, that uh, uh, that Bobby actually wrote the email that Fran Townsend, uh, who we, co we covered that here, it was the email that came out right after the announcement of the investigation um, that was being done by the state uh, that basically laid blame on, like, employees and deflected all this stuff. And it was very, it was just, it was one of those emails that people were like, wow, man, Fran Townsend, we knew she was a piece of shit, but dang, she's really showing it now. And then it turns out it wasn't even her. So Bobby went so far as to say, as, as to basically make himself look bad next to, a, like, a tortured sympathizer. <laughs> So Bobby, Bobby's the one that actually wrote the fucking email that we all talked about. Um, <clears throat> and it's just like, it just, it just keeps getting deeper. Like he has his hands in all the pots, in, in just all the pots. Uh, I actually went, I wasn't going to include some of this part, uh, some of this stuff, but I actually went back and did some research into like the, how, how uh, Bobby came into control of, of Activision from uh, Vivendi. And there's a lot of legalese in here that I'm not going to try to touch on. And I was actually reading this document. Jen comes in here to bug me for something, right? I think she just wanted to kiss, right? But I was like, I was like, while well, I was trying to read this, this insanely long uh, uh, document covering the, um, uh, the entire, uh, I guess, all the communication and the entire transition from when uh, Bobby, uh, um, uh, Nolan... These other like shareholders, uh, win from like like Steve wins, uh, like like nephew or some shit. Uh, Steve wins uh, is a, is a Las Vegas, a billionaire casino mogul who actually uh, ended up being dethroned, so to speak, uh, due to sexual alleg alleg allegations that came out. Uh, so so no surprise, he's buddies. <laughs> he's being called St Uncle Steve by uh, by Bobby. Um, <laughs> And of course, of course, there's also there's also Bobby showing up in Epstein's little black book. I mean, you know, there's just there's just a lot of signs here, a lot of signs that point to uh, Bobby being uh, having a history of being kind of a piece of shit. Um, and this article, or this this entire read up, which I was actually about halfway through, and I said, you know what, I can't I can't finish this right now. Uh, it actually goes into detail discussing uh, how Bobby went and created a, a shell company in the Cayman Islands, uh, which I have the actual SEC documentation for that here uh you can see activision blizzard they, they acquired stock that way <clears throat> and you can see that bobby's name is down here it's kind of sorry all fine print so easier just to is a robert kodak there it is robert a kodak narrow reporting person um so we know that that's toilet that's toilet reading material yeah you say it's okay to threaten <laughs> It's not Bobby Kodak in there doing all the quests. <laughs> the completionist. Uh, but yeah, it goes through in detail, st staggering detail about how he uh, managed to uh, finagle control of Vivendi, um, Vivendi's share of Activision Blizzard and thus winning their independence. Um, and we remember, if you guys remember, we probably covered this on, like, I'm guessing probably Legendary or something like that. And probably just briefly, not really fully understanding the scope of what happened. Uh, but this is an article from 2013 uh, 13 from Polygon discussing um, uh, the deal that went on. And then when you later read about like how that deal actually ended up happening and how he was able to uh, muscle his way into getting not only you know, a, a deal, a slam a deal on shares from Vivendi, but also muscled his way into uh, uh, getting more uh, more seats on the board for uh, uh, a, a Steve Wynn's nephew or whatever, um, who are like their best friends with Bobby and uh, somebody else. And so, so it's, I mean, this, I mean, as you'd expect, like, you know, with any kind of like, 
corporate anything. There's always some kind of like shadiness or shenanigans. You know, you see in the in the movies how like they go to the board meeting and they're like, oh well, also there's this like completely like plot twisting like you know piece of evidence or whatever that I didn't want to bring up till the last moment, whatever. And so, so there's 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 just this. Um, <clears throat> Almost unrealistic type of shit that happens. That happens in real life where they end up uh, muscling people out of positions and, and muscling people out of power. And Bobby was one of those who ended up uh, taking over Activision. Um, and he wanted basically like authority. Like he wanted to know everything about every part of Activision Blizzard. Um, and uh, and thus like ultimately ended up reducing Vivendi's shares to like 11% or something like that. So, um, and he is at, well, at the time he's at 24.9%, um, but they had like, well, I think it was like, like three board seats and he added two more, which gave him control because he added his buddies to the board seats. So yeah, <laughs> just like the movies, man, it's crazy. So yeah, you got, got it for a deal. Um, and it's just, I mean, obviously he's, he is ruthless to some degree, right? I mean, he's <clears throat> making death threats. He's, uh, uh, he's taking control of the board. Uh, and by the way, he does have control of the board. So when we see, when we see, uh, uh, responses from, uh, from, uh, Activision Blizzard, like the board specifically, actually, let me pull that up. Uh, well, you know, that's, I mean, that's basically run by Bobby. So, of course, that's not going to be, you know, they're not going to say anything necessarily bad. But the board does agree with his actions. Jews invite his IRL friends to the guild. That's right. <clears throat> that's why the money men like Bobby. Yeah, so even here, it says the goals we set for ourselves are both critical and ambitious. The board remains confident in Bobby Kotick's leadership, commitment, and ability to achieve these goals. Of course they do. Sign Bobby. <laughs> oh, man. So, <clears throat> we know he wrote the, we know that, um, he wrote the fucking email. We know that we have they they have uh, uh, inside uh, email internal emails showing that um, he had covered up uh, sexual misconduct that had occurred in the company before, uh, and you know at, at this point <clears throat> we know that I mean like the stocks are just basically like the, like just just tumbling. This is this this shows a, a drop that happened as of November 16th, which is earlier this week. Uh but I mean it actually we'll, we'll see what time is it right now. Yeah, so the the stock market is closed right now, so we'll be able to get a final number here. And it looks like ooh, it looks like we'll see what 5 days. I mean, they finished at 6238. That's the lowest number since probably April of last year. Uh yeah, as you could see, so it's still pretty low. We'll go one year. We we'll go over five years. So over five years, we have to go back see it was sixty or the sixty-two something. So it looks like they are sitting. Yeah, April last year. So around April last year is where they. So all of their pandemic like huge earnings, everything they got, like everybody else, currently wiped. Currently wiped. Now that doesn't mean that they can't you know turn it around. You could buy you could buy the dip and all that. Like that doesn't mean you can't do that. But can they do it with Bobby? If Bobby were to be let go, would that be a positive influence on the stock? Um, twenty three percent loss in in six in six six months. Yeah, in six months, totally. The important people got their bonuses. Yeah, you were selling them for one hundred ten dollars earlier this year. Yep. Depends on who replaces them. That's true. Depends on who replaces them. Um, <clears throat> so we know we ha we have uh, uh, Activision Blitter, Activision Blizzard official Twitter. Uh, coming on board. Actually, no, hold on a second. Uh, just to go back to the board, basically saying that they have uh, complete uh, um, uh, confidence that he is going to, uh, you know, basically meet these goals they had set for themselves. They're ambitious and all that stuff. You know, really, it's really ambitious. It's really ambitious to just like you know not cover up uh, uh, sexual harassment charges and all that stuff. It's really ambitious, man. Just don't, just don't do that. Um, <clears throat> I see my my own internal investigation shows no misconduct. Yeah. <laughs> Should go down further, to be honest. Company needs a full refresh. Uh, Bobby's buddies will replace him. What are you talking about? I mean, that's true. See, I also did an internal investigation. Yet, <laughs> all sign. Bobby's getting replaced. He's psychotic, and he'll burn the entire company to the ground. If so, if, so if he wins, 
And he already did that. I mean, he already he already threatened to basically take Activision Blizzard out uh, in order to tank Vivendi if he didn't get his way with the ACS, AC, ASAC2 Cayman Island shell company thing he put together. Like, he basically threatened that he was going to take down the entire company and then Vivendi would lose everything. They were already, like, billions of dollars in debt. Uh, and so they had no choice but to sell. I know, it's it's, a, it's ASAC2. Uh, uh, and then Roman numeral two, and he'll fucking do it again. That's right. He already threatened to do it once. So uh, uh, Kotaku put together a pretty nice list of all of the uh, uh, board members. Actually, this, this is a this is this is this is like this is the thing that we hate most about Kotaku used like weaponized in the right way, right? Like hate it when Kotaku likes to lump all this bullshit together that's completely irrelevant to what's being talked about in the story. Right, just to like, I don't know, just just to like, I don't know, make it make it a little extra. I don't know what the word is, but just to really pat it some, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but in this case, it's great because as you scroll down, you know, you see, oh yeah, Bobby, blah, 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 and then you scroll down, you see, oh, there's this tank, right? You scroll down a little bit more, and it's like, oh, look at that, there's Bobby and Jeffrey Epstein's fucking little black book. <laughs> They just they just throw all that shit out. Pizzazz. That's right. Spicy. Right? This is this is where Kotaku's spiciness really comes really comes in clutch. <laughs> Cause I like to throw the shit in the wall, see what sticks. Yeah. Uh and so this goes through each person who's on the board and discuss a little bit about their um uh, their history. Uh and then you know, some of them some of them they dig into like their uh, some previous allegations or, or or misgivings, I guess you could say, for some of the board members. Um but in general, people who get to these positions typically have done something bad in their lives. This, good people don't get this far. Um <clears throat> We see uh, here. We see uh, Peter Nolan, uh, uh, Brian Kelly, uh, Brian Kelly, and um, Brian Kelly and uh, and Bobby were the two that started the uh, shell company, uh, where they started raising funds to uh, to buy out the the, the Activision from Vivendi, uh, and then that and that's when they brought in Peter Peter Nolan. Nolan inherited his um, his seat from uh, Wynn. And uh, because he works for the same company, uh, same investments company, they don't do they list it here. Uh, so there's air sale. Oh, they don't list it here. Oh, golden foot. No, they don't, they don't list it here. But <clears throat> they hire you, huh? You did pad things too. <laughs> Good people don't get this far. It's pretty damn hard. It's true. Um, it just goes down the list, gives you a pretty good rundown of who all the members of the board are in case you're wondering what kind of people would back this person, right? Um, and again, this is, this is Kotaku doing the reporting. So they're going to find, they're going to find the issues that are, uh, like related to social justice. And this is their forte, honestly, like they're pretty good at digging up dirt on people. <laughs> sometimes to, you know, sometimes to it's a little too far, but, uh, in this case, when you go down, he sees, uh, they basically give, they give you a good, a good thorough rundown. It says like Kelly's Activision lifer, having been in the company since 1991, along with Kodak, he found Call of Duty Endowment. Trustee of New York, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we see that this other, uh, Brian Meyer, he's currently the board of directors for Human Rights Watch and Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. Like, it just, it just basically names all of them. Um, <clears throat> and everything that they've been part of. Here, it's the Disney executives and board members were hiring their own kids into high-paying positions when her son Craig was given a job at $81,000 a year. There was a whole SEC investigation involving that, involving Ravita Bowers, who's uh, one of the uh, uh, people on the board. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 you know, like I said, these are these are people with uh, questionable morals that are supporting somebody with. Uh, I mean, I want to say questionable moral, but like, like proven to be questionable morals. <laughs> so yeah, not no surprise here. And remember, Bobby Bobby controls the board, so there's no incentive for him to just like give it up. And we've already seen what he's done in the past with muscling it out of other people's hands. So like he may just not go anywhere and just to give everybody the fucking finger. There's a lot of pressure, though. Like, this is a lot of pressure from investors, people with a lot of money to lose, if this company continues to hemorrhage money uh, in stocks. Like, I mean, the bounce back hasn't happened yet. I expect there to be some kind of bounce back. Uh, probably Monday, Tuesday, we'll start to see a little bit of movement going back up in terms of Activision stock. But if it doesn't, like, that's a lot of pressure, man. You know, like, he may be in control of the board, but when somebody's, like, slated to lose possibly, like, millions and millions of dollars... I mean, sometimes, sometimes those people in those positions play by different rules. They might leave a voicemail talking about, you know, maybe some kind of accident might happen or some shit. Bobby. So, <clears throat> Bobby responds to some of this. 
with, of course, you know, very, I mean, it, there's, there's really not really anything here that we could really like extract and, uh, and, and say that this is any of this is particularly like heartwarming or anything. Um, but it says here, it says, as I've made clear, we are moving forward with a new zero tolerance policy for inappropriate behavior. Zero means zero. Any reprehensible conduct is simply unacceptable. But that's starting now, moving forward, because they've already said that Activision Blizzard's zero tolerance policy on harassment does not apply to code. So people obviously looked at that and said, hold on a second. Some of these allegations actually concern you as well, Bobby. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We met from now. Who started now? And we're going for it. But it also doesn't apply. Of course it doesn't, man. Yeah. Rules for thee. Not for me. That's a favorite. <sighs> Calling it Rib Bobby Cody 2022 car accident. I mean, when you start losing people a lot of money like that, like that's... Uh, uh, of course, Activision Blizzard's Twitter is getting shit on because they tweeted us that we're listening and taking action. Our ambition is to make Activision Blizzard the most welcoming and inclusive workplace in our industry with a z strict zero policy, blah, 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 zero tolerance. Somebody, of course, completely owns this with this fucking... <laughs> Simpsons me. Zero tolerance, harassment, company-wide policy. Huh? Hold on a second. There it is. Zero tolerance, harassment policy, comma, company-wide. <laughs> uh man so pissing on an entire company to tell them it's raining classic knife to the back accidents so furthermore in the same in the same uh, report we get this uh we get this little piece from that concerns Jennifer O'Neill. Now Jennifer O'Neill was the head of uh Vicarious uh Visions, which was um incorporated into the Blizzard uh house. Uh so Activision Blizzard House of Companies. And uh she ended up uh taking over the company when uh, uh Jay Allen Brack stepped down as the CEO president. She co is co-leading this, right? Um, now, sh she she put out a statement saying that she's leaving the company by before the end of the year or so by the end of the year um, to go and, and manage her her nonprofit and everything. Remember, we were talking about her nonprofit was getting like a hell, a hell of a lot of money or something. So we were like, oh, she got paid off to leave. Well, internal emails showed a couple of interesting things. So I'll read some of this here. It says... <clears throat> It was clear, this is this is her from her email, right? It was clear that the company would never prioritize our people the right way. So Ms. Ms. O'Neill said in the email she had been sexually harassed earlier in her career at Activision and that she was paid less than her male counterpart at the helm of Blizzard and wanted to discuss her resignation. She says, I have been tokenized, marginalized, and discriminated against. Uh, she described a party uh, for she described a party for Activision development studios she attended with Mr. Kodak around 2007, in which scantily clad women danced in stripper poles at the same party DJ encouraged female attendees to drink more so the men could have a better time, according to another person who was present. This was every industry party in 2007. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. But this is every industry party in 2007. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's shit. But it really was. I know. No, I went. Yeah, are you kidding me? Wargaming was the worst. <laughs> Wargaming was the worst. <laughs> God damn it. I went, to, I went to one. It was like all suicide girls. They hired the suicide girls to go to this party and just like hang out with the dudes or whatever. It was really weird, man. It was really weird. Um, so this was, an, again, another internal, internal email uh, to uh, Activision's legal team where she discusses this. So this is, remember, we were like, we were reading that uh, that story from her. And every time you get a public facing uh, story from somebody who's le leaving, you always are like, is there more to this? Right? Is there more to this? So talking about talking about her pay she's she was getting less pay than um uh, uh ibarra who was the other co-leader of blizzard they both came from different positions in the company where they had different pay of course uh but they were supposed to be working on getting a deal uh where the new contract would have the same pay so so it says, uh, uh, so this is from Ibarra. He says, hello, Blizzard. Please see the email I sent this morning. I know many leaders plan to meet with their teams throughout the day. This is a difficult time for all of us, myself included. I have been asked, and I want to make it clear, Jen and I shared uh, with management that we wanted to be paid the same to co-lead Blizzard together. Because part of 
this whole investigation that they're under is that they would pay uh, it's to basically uh, 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 address the uh, gender pay um, discrimination that was going on. So, of course, you want to start at the top. Right? So, <clears throat> they, so, Mike says that, that uh, Ibarra says that they, they sent all this stuff, they, they sent this out, they're looking for uh, a response from them, uh, and she says, however, O'Neill seemingly sought to clarify the situation further, adding details that Ibarra had not mentioned. Uh, in additional conversations viewed by IGN, O'Neill responded forcefully to Ibarra's comments, saying that she didn't want to be involved in a debate on Slack, and that she hadn't received an equivalent offer until after she attended her re resignation. So she says, quote, when Mike and I were placed in the same co-lead role, we we went, uh, went into the role with our previous compensation, which was not equivalent. Uh, it remained that way for some time, well after we made multiple rejected requests to change it to parity, she wrote. And it remains unclear as to why Blizzard rejected this. She continued, while the company informed me that uh, before I tendered my resignation that they were working on a new proposal, we were, we were made equivalent offers only after I tendered that resignation. So, so yeah, I mean, of course, when they see, oh shit, the token the, the 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 token diversity hire that we made is gonna is gonna leave and that could cause some serious strife maybe we should go ahead and pay her a little more it probably wasn't even that much i mean when you when you look at bobby's pay and how much he can get oh it's six oh i'm sorry that's right he's getting paid sixty two thousand dollars and five hundred dollars sixty two thousand five hundred dollars now so so maybe maybe that's a bad comparison but when we look at his potential earnings, uh, it probably wasn't really that much of a discrepancy. But we don't know how much that is. So we can't really compare. But they probably should have done everything within their fucking power to make sure that the woman they put in charge to show that they were willing to, to have diversity in their in their upper ranks. Heaven forbid she runs a company herself. Can't have that. Had to have a man there with her. Uh, they couldn't even make that fucking right. So they couldn't even, from the fucking start... For the fucking start, they couldn't even get it right. They couldn't even fucking get it right, and so she ended up leaving. Made the nice little le wrote the nice little letter for us and everything, and then she ended up leaving. And so now we're fucking now now we're finding all this internal shit that's going on, and we see the fucking truth. So of course, ripples everywhere. Ripples fucking everywhere. Everyone is picking it up. Uh, everybody's reading it. Everybody has read this story. Okay, everybody knows that Bobby. As a history now, okay. Uh, we have um, Xbox Chief uh, Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer went on record saying, uh, "Let me pull up his actual quote here." Uh, it says the leadership at Xbox, uh, Microsoft, to stand by our teams to support them building a safe environment for all. And he said that they're deeply disturbed and troubled by the horrific events and actions of Activision. So, I mean, when you have when you have the head of one of your biggest partners which Xbox is, um, basically saying, you know, mm, we're not quite sure about what's going on over there. Like, that doesn't look good, right? That doesn't look good at all. Then also, the uh, PlayStation chief says, we do not believe their statements of response properly address the situation. So they're saying that what they've done so far is not enough. It's not enough. So now you have... Your two biggest partners, the two biggest consoles. <laughs> I mean, Nintendo is never Nintendo never gets involved in drama, right? Never. You'll, they'll never make a statement on anything like this. And if they do, then you know someone really fucked up. Uh, no, but these guys, they got out there. They got their voices out there. Hey, whoa, whoa, we don't really like what's going on over there. And whether or not they run their companies better or worse doesn't matter. Because they're not under the mic, the, the mic, the uh, uh, the um, microscope right now. Uh, this is just a really, really, really bad look, and also clearly, I think, attributes to the stock price going down. It's one thing when all of us on Twitter are like, "Whoa, Bobby, bad," right? But it's another thing when two heads of major partners, distribution partners, are are also commenting on it. That's bad. That's bad. Now. We should, we should, uh, uh, I don't know if we can, like, put these guys in a tier list or something like that, but Bobby is, like, is at the top. Like, he really is, in terms of, like, pay and power, like, he is at the fucking top. But we talk about, uh, we talk about, um, 
uh, um, Phil Spencer and uh, Ryan, uh, uh, Jim Ryan. Uh, we talk about Jim Ryan and Phil Spencer. Like they're like kind of small fry when you when you compare to to Bobby. So they're kind of punching uphill in a way, but they're the highest that we have. Right, like they're kind of the highest that we have. Uh, even you know, if you look at his pay, like you know, Bobby gets like two hundred something million dollars a year or some crazy shit, right? Um, <clears throat> or hundred was a hundred something million, whatever. It's got a lot of fucking commas and a lot of zeros. Uh, and we compare that to the earnings that um, EA had. EA is a major company, huge company, makes like a quarter of what Bobby makes. So again, like these guys are, they're kind of punching uphill in terms of power and money. Uh, but their influence is massive. You're a game developer. On one side, you need platforms that you could partner with. And when you have some that are saying that they're going to evaluate some of the relationships that they have, that's bad. Like, it, I wouldn't put it past Blizzard. I'm sorry. I wouldn't put it past Xbox or PlayStation to make the call to, like, not support games because it would satisfy, uh their respective bases now that's probably not going to happen considering activision is call of duty and call of duty is a lot of butts and seats playing your xbox right or playstation whatever you guys play it on um so it's probably not going to happen but wouldn't it be awesome if it did <laughs> sony dropped cyberpunk 2077 that's correct sony did drop cyberpunk 2077 um and they uh and that, like, I think that lit a huge fire under their ass to get shit fixed. And thank God. <laughs> thank God, because now, next year, the game might actually be done. Uh, so the threat is there. It's true. The threat is there. They have exercised it before. They have... Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's possible. But man, oh, that'd be fucking huge. That would be... I'm, I'm just not... I'm not going to put... I'm not going to uh, put all my eggs in that basket, though. That's for fucking sure. So, <clears throat> in response to this... Everybody's got a response to this. Uh, and the uh, Activision Blizzard uh, came out with a statement and they just basically said, um, whoop. It says, uh, we respect all feedback from our value partners and we are committed to uh, the work of ensuring our culture and workplace are safe, diverse, and in inclusive. Uh, I almost said insensitive. <laughs> uh, uh, so none of this was good enough. None of this was good enough, so they had a walkout um, uh, uh, at a Better ABK, which is an, an activist group that uh, I believe that, is that the shareholder group? Let me see. Uh, employees, activity, yeah, okay, they're just the, the employees. That's right. There's another group that are shareholders, and they've always like been trying, they've historically always uh, been on the side of trying to oust um, uh, Bobby from his position. But <clears throat> uh, ABK is just basically a grassroots organization, almost like a union of sorts, uh, that is uh, that works with Blizzard employees and organizes and gets people out there. And you know, as you can see here, uh, one one of many pictures that came out. It uh, looks like uh, one of the articles or one of the tweets says that there was something like 150 people, yeah, 150 people in attendance. Um, if I can find another picture, different picture. You can, yeah, here we go. So we can see we have a bunch of people right here on the front. Uh, it said, lead responsibil uh, responsibly. Uh, we have equality, uh, walking out for better blizzard, and force arbitration. Uh, every voice matters. Play nice, play fair. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. So it's this is a lot. what she said. <laughs> Send the frat boys home or whatever. Um, is Josh still working there? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, there in this in this um, in all of this, there was also a petition to oust Bobby. Um, and in that petition, the number kept going up. I tweeted about it every time I looked. It was like, oh, so seven hundred people signed, eight hundred people signed. Uh, as of eleven thirty, which was about four hours ago, uh, fifteen hundred and ninety-eight signatures were on it, and now it's sixteen hundred ninety. So. Over so about a hundred signatures have have uh, have popped on here. There's there's a lot of names on here, um, and if we do a search, we could find. I mean, if you guys want to, we could go Josh Allen, right? Josh Allen. Oops, I spelled it wrong. Of course, I did. Josh Allen's here. Our boy Josh, aka Lore, is here. Uh, Mike Shafton is here. Nope, he's gonna he's gonna move. No, Mike. Wow, Mike Shafton is here. Uh, I would I would reckon probably everybody is on here. Like it's it's 
I, I, I mean, if you guys follow Josh on Twitter, you know that his his name would be on here. I was not surprised at all to find that. <laughs> it's, of course, it's going to be out here. Uh, I should wonder if uh, Mika. Okay, um, it's a lot, of, man. It's a fucking a lot of names. But does it mean anything? Not when Bobby controls the board. Ha! <laughs> Not when he controls the board. So it says right here, it says, We understand no longer have confidence in the leadership of Bobby Kotick as the CEO of Activision Blizzard. The information that's come to light is of his behaviors and practices of running our companies runs counter to the uh, culture and integrity we require of our leadership and directly conflicts with the initiatives started by our peers. We asked that Bobby remove himself as CEO of Blizzard. Uh, uh, they totally ignored the last petition. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bobby's day. <laughs> I wonder. Let me see. Bobby, uh, 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 Bobby, 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 Bobby. Now, okay, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody like slipped their name under there. But why hasn't Bobby signed it? I know you would think, you would think. <laughs> Bobby probably made that petition. He's 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 doing all the quests, right? That's right. He's doing all the quests. Um. So, so Bobby is. Uh, sorry. So so yeah. You know, so Bobby's under a lot of pressure right now. He's under a lot of pressure to. Uh, yeah, like Jordan said, he's under a lot of pressure to get that payout. Uh, I actually had forgotten that somebody linked this to me, so thank you again for reminding me. Yes, we do know how much money he would get. Or, I mean, probably ballpark, right? Give or take maybe a couple million. But it's looking like that number is $292,970,341. Um, if he was terminated uh, by Activision Blizzard without cause or termination by employees, employee for good reason for following a, following a change of control. So that's that's on good terms. Uh, now there is something here. It says termination by Activision Blizzard for cause, in which he would only get two hundred sixty-four thousand five hundred twenty-four dollars, which is nothing. Uh, how do you even live off that money? My goodness. So, <laughs> so if he's terminated for any of the multitude of things that we now have evidence that he has done then he will get nothing and which means that the board or the company will not have to pay this insane amount of money um i made that much kill off kobolds and goldshire that's right so it may actually be in the board's best interest to find a way to terminate bobby uh with cause there's, there's evidence out there floating around that could suggest that it is all true. And they could say, well, you did hide allegations of sexual misconduct uh, with some of your other executives. So maybe you are not fit and maybe we should let you go. But that's not how it works. When you're that rich, it's not how it works. When you have that much power, it's not how it works. They're probably with cause is probably something like you actually shot somebody else on the board with with witnesses, with more than one witness then maybe maybe don't forget this isn't his only job he gets high he gets fired here he's still on the board for coke that's right he's also on the board for like the los angeles museum for art or whatever uh he's on he's on a few boards most of people most people that sit on a board typically have other boards that they're also part of um as how much of the board could he take down with him I don't think he would want to take down any of the board because there's still control there. Uh, I don't know if the ASAC shell company that he set up still has any vested interest in uh, in Blizzard because it's possible that he could remove himself and still be in some kind of control because he is part of that shell company. Uh, but I don't know if that's actually still the case. So I can't really comment on that. But um, I, I feel like, yeah, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Of course, yeah, I feel like he might be, well, that's referring to the, the people having multiple board seats. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's if he has his own backups here. I'd seriously be looking at the old merger contract to see if there is a clause to separate from Activision similar to what uh, Bungie did. For what? For who's, wait, so who's going to separate, like, Blizzard? I mean, I, I mean as, as far as I can see... Like Activision Blizzard, and as far as I've always said, that Activision Blizzard is the same company, right? Like, um, I mean, both of them are like rife with, I mean, with this, with this, uh, any of the studios. Yeah, you know what? I mean, that's okay. That's a good point. When we talk about a single company like Blizzard or something, well, I shouldn't say that, but when we talk about a single name like Blizzard, that doesn't really count because they're so far intertwined, it's not going to happen, right? But, if we want to look at like Treyarch, if we want to look at uh, uh, Vicarious Visions, um, you know, there might be things in there that where enough of them could say, you know what, we want to 
like you know sever sever this contract based off of blank um who knows who fucking knows remember when josh made the joke after the after cata release blizzard would just start eating people because they're millionaires huh <laughs> i said before i feel like bobby take back seat and give a position if it stands to make him more money in the long run oh yeah absolutely although i mean there's there's he's got a lot of power right he's got i mean he's got this he's got this platinum jetpack here um just waiting for him should anything happen with the only one, the only one where he amounts to, I mean, basically zero. I mean, two hundred sixty-four thousand dollars, but in his eyes, it's basically zero. Uh, which probably he needs some kind of act of God or something to, in order to qualify for this. Um, so you aren't hearing this in the in the uh, Call of Duty studios. Yeah, platinum jetpack. Exactly. It's just what it is. It's not. A, it's not a golden parachute anymore, guys. <laughs> It's a di it's a it's a bejeweled diamond encrusted platinum jetpack. Uh, that whole board is made up of people with power, not just his company. Many have government ties. It's correct. So you know, we may be talking about video games, but uh, these are these are real and ruthless business people that have gotten into these positions. This is not, you know, uh, Sean Murray. You know the 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 indie dev that got way too big for his britches. You know this is this is not uh, Peter Molyneux, who's who's you know game developer who turned into a prophet. Uh, this is not, <laughs> these are like these are business people who are not fucking around when it comes to making money. Um, Randy, yeah, even Randy, even Randy. <laughs> this is not dare I say Randy exactly. <laughs> it's a this is a, this is another echelon, right? This is definitely another echelon above all that, you know. And you know, even going back to Jim Ryan and uh, uh um and Phil Spencer, you know, it's even for them. That's why I say like that. This is a this is a different tier. Like like they are up here in like corporate god status, um. And we're talking about people who are like grassroots. They understand the community. They communicate communicate with the community, um. Like they are, they are part of this. Uh, uh, they're part of of this culture. The only way he will ever get fired for cause is if there are criminal charges with a conviction. Other than that, he would get three hundred mil at the very least. That's true. That's true. I mean, I'm, I hundred percent, hundred percent believe that. Um, so this is just a this is this story is still ongoing in terms of predictions. Uh, I would li I would like to see Bobby resign, you know, like just just like maybe do what's best for the investors uh, or maybe gets muscled out of a position. But he's got he I feel like he just has uh, he's like the power. The money is fine. He's got so much money like he doesn't really need any more. I mean, he took the pay cut to sixty two thousand uh, dollars. So it's not like he's starving for money or anything like that. I think it's just the power that he wants. Um, and this is, you know, against when there's allegations of him and he settled this, so I can only assume it's probably true, uh, of him making death threats to assistants, uh, that I'm going to end, end your life or whatever the fuck. Uh, like it, it makes me, th and that was 2006. It's like, maybe, he, maybe, yeah, maybe he just likes the power. Um, it's not needing the money for them. It's by having it. They hoard it like dragons and there's never enough. Uh, if I just got 155 million bonus, I'd be okay with a pay cut too. Mm hmm. Uh huh. But somehow, that was not the only story this week. <laughs> somehow, uh, we also had uh, a tweet that went out earlier this week, and I actually saw this when it popped up, and I thought I thought maybe it was just kind of a joke. I wasn't sure what to what to make of it, but it was Lightstream. Now, Lightstream is a browser based like XSplit or OBS. Right, <laughs> stream has like hold my beer, yeah. Uh, so it's 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 a system, and I think I saw them first at maybe Twitch TwitchCon, uh, the last time I went to a TwitchCon. Uh, that was the I think that was before or I think that was during the bathroom incident. Um, and so they have a great like you know web based system that lets them capture and uh what's it yeah probably san jose uh lets them lets them capture your gameplay and right through the browser right just like i mean if you ever use like any other service through a browser uh like they're pretty um inventive on how they interface with your hardware so they could have a webcam they could do screen grabs they could do microphones they could do all that shit which means they could take all that data and they could turn it into a live stream if they wanted to um <laughs> 
<laughs> web conference tool as well. Yeah, totally. So they posted a tweet, which was very, which was very human, and that's why I wasn't sure if it was real. Uh, and it says, it says, hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, just change it up a bit so it's not obvious you copied. Clown face says bet. And they posted this screenshot that shows the two sites side by side, Lightstream site and Streamlabs Studio site. And as you can see, there's a lot of similarities here. Um, like it's a lot of similarities. <laughs> I wonder if it'll actually let me pull up the full image. Let's see. So on the left we have Lightstream is literally one of the greatest things I've ever discovered. Thank you so much for making it so easy. And then over here we have Streamlab Studios is literally one of the greatest things I've ever discovered. Thank you so much for making it easy. Over here, love this platform. Love how they listen to the community. Over here, love this platform. Love how they listen to their community. It's the perfect platform for console streaming. <laughs> Oh man, all you need is your console. Go live in minutes for your console. Full layout and design and control. Full layout and design and control. Cloud catch for console streams. Cloud catch for console streams. How does it work? How does it work? Activate, activate, personalize, personalize. Stream, stream. Wow. Copy pasta. Dang. <laughs> One step up from Lorem Ipsub. Yes, please. <laughs> it was just. It was just placeholder text, bro. That's right. That's what they're saying. That's right. They they did. They replied and they said, uh, "It says but we made a mistake. Text on the landing page was placeholder text that went into production by error. This is our fault. We removed the text as soon as we found out our intended version is now live. Livestream team is great, and we've reached out directly to the Paul. It was more than just the text. It was the entire fucking site." Ah, scroll to the bottom, read the reviews of the comparisons. Oh. Guns. Guns, we just did that. <laughs> Guns, you pay attention to me. All right, look at me in my face. <laughs> someone's getting distracted by all the new sugar daddies. So, <laughs> someone's getting the axe. <laughs> they copied everything and changed the day. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Poor junior dev that made that site. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so it's so this was like, oh man, they fucked up, right? Somebody fucked up on the team. But then OBS chimes in, actual OBS. I'll go back to my whole oh, guns. You know we love you. Shut up. Uh, it's a near the launch of Slobs. Streamlabs reached out to us about using the OBS name. We kindly asked them not to. They did so anyways and followed up by filing a trademark. We've tried to sort this out in private, and they have been uncooperative at every turn. Uh, and so they said, we are faced with confused users and even companies who do not understand the difference between the two apps. Support, vo support volunteers are sometimes met with angry users demanding refunds. We've had interactions with, with several companies who did not realize our apps are separate. There are probably people watching this right now who thought that Streamlabs, OBS, and OBS was like a partnership of some sort. But no, they, they just used the name. It says, legally, they have obey, obey the terms of the GPL, but they have repeatedly disregarded the spirit of open source and giving back. Someone could correct me if I'm wrong, but I've, I've heard that this is a uh, a, a hostile fork uh, whenever you, you split from an open source and then you basically turn it into what Streamlabs has uh, become. Um, open source software 101. Yep, yep, that's what it's calling. Yep, yep. Hostile fork is correct. So that's, that's I mean... In the eyes of game dev or develop dev period, uh, you know this is a bad thing. This is ethically a bad thing. Sure, legally they're probably fine, all that stuff, but ethically this is a pretty bad thing. Now, uh, ethically sometimes holds more weight than the legally side, especially when it comes to social media. Shitty morality when using open source. Very knowledgeable today, Mike. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I was I was like, ooh, hostile fork. That sounds interesting. <laughs> a classic, a classic dick move. Um, so uh, pokey. A uh, Pokemon whose face was on the front page for uh, ever, she chimed in, initially saying that she wants them to rectify this, right? And then this morning she made a couple more tweets, um, 
where she says, uh, I have already requested that they remove my image and affiliation from the site. They removed 10 plus images of me, some of which I never gave their permission to use. LOL. My initial tweet was oh, only two companies had issues with them. So there was a little bit, there was a little bit of, uh, of hostility towards, uh, towards, uh, Pokey when, um, uh, when she did not, uh, I guess, condemn them enough. But as she states, it was only two companies had issues with them. There was more. There was more. We, they, they, a, uh, a user, she has some more here. She said, I was hopeful Streamlabs could rectify these issues and compensate companies. I'm looking into these new claims as well as looking into swapping donation services, but this can't be done quickly because I have complicated alert systems, plus my donation cap is through Streamlabs. This does not mean that I won't swap. It will just take some time. I do not condone their business practices and will not stand by them. Now, uh, I will tell you guys, that yes, I do use Streamlabs. I had no idea this was going to happen. <laughs> this is going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> I was not ready for this. Uh, I will probably just wait and see what happens if I go and move more shit over to something else? Um, but we'll see. So Streamlabs apologized, so it was fine, right? Uh, Elgato, yeah, I got. It's funny. I actually have that same tweet. Wait, is it the same tweet? Oh no, it's a different tweet. Hold on a second. Let me grab that one. You got something different. Elgato said, "Wait, oh." Oh, got to, yeah. <laughs> Control your live stream from your phone with Streamlabs Stream Deck. <laughs> Elgato is throwing shade, man. They they have they have another tweet they put up uh, uh, with uh, L Lance. You guys probably know. You guys know his shorts. Uh, oh, whoops. This is uh, something else. We'll get to in a minute. Um, let me see. Uh, here we go. So L Lance did a uh, he did he did a little skit where he talks. Thanks. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how our new website page came we go. out. Oh man, that's that's awesome. Can you just uh can you just hold it still for a second for me? Well, what are you doing? Oh nothing. I'm just just admiring. Can you actually hold it a little closer so that I can uh admire it some more? Um Okay. Alright. Awesome. Yeah. I think that's I think that'll do it. What do you think our new website page just came out with it? Oh come on! Seriously? What? I worked really hard on this. <laughs> yeah, I totally get it, man. We worked really hard I love, on our I too. love it. No, you didn't. <laughs> Guy. You just copied everything I did. God, you sound just like those losers at Elgato. Dude, that's my work. I made that. Look, they're identical. Huh, well, that's weird because I don't see your name on it. Well, it was there before you took it off. Seems to me like you're a little jealous. Jealous of who? Myself? That's mine. Huh, now that you mention it, it does kind of look like you copied us a little bit. <laughs> what? Don't blame yourself. This happens all the time. Because so, uh, you guys should follow Lance. Like Lance, Lance just makes some pretty good content. These little shorts he comes up with, like it's just fucking brilliant. And so Elgato puts this in place. I don't. This might this might go over a lot of people's heads, but this is this is from a not another team movie, uh, Chris Evans' first movie, I believe. Uh, and it's a scene where he's admiring himself, and then he moves on to another picture where he's admiring a picture of himself, admiring admiring a picture. Yeah. So it's the ultimate in like vanity, and so of course, of course, they had to drop it in there. So the Human Torch, yeah, that guy. <laughs> uh, oh, Pokey's. Oh, so let me grab this uh, uh, breaking news. Let me see. Um, Pokey's comment on Streamlabs. Oh, what am I looking at here? Uh, <clears throat> oh, what's this? Oh, Ludwig. I reached out to Pokey when I was choosing Streamlabs Stream Elements because her face was on Slab's website. Uh, I found out that she wasn't even signed with them and just let them use her likeness for an image. Uh, the claim uh, that she was paid and trying to smooth it over is total conjecture from Coil, who I imagine didn't think it'd get a clip and blown up here. Anyway, all hail Queen Pokey down with Streamlabs. <laughs> Quick, someone tell me how to react. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, this is good. Yes, because there wasn't there was a uh, coil, uh, another streamer or, who uh, who he just I mean, I, I get it. Like he was just talking shit, saying they shouldn't. Why would they even support him now? Like with everything they've done, why they can give them a chance? They should just find somebody else. They're probably getting paid. And so there was, it, you know, when, once it's LSF, like it becomes gospel. So it kind of took off. Um, tell me how to feel LSF exactly. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, Streamlabs did come out with an apology. <laughs> I don't know why they do this. It's just... <sighs> so, remember it's a cyberpunk. Like, cyberpunk, the whole, like, yellow with the black text thing, like, that became a fucking meme. Everyone's putting shit. You can't... 
you can't do anything without it being fucking memed on, right? Like, you just can't. Like, you can't. How are you going to format? I mean, they try to go the simplest route possible. Like, we, we'll do, we'll do black text, or sorry, white text on black background. It says, we are taking immediate action to remove OBS from our name. Streamlabs OBS is built on top of the OBS open source platform. Streamlabs OBS uh, is also open source, and our code is publicly available. We take responsibility for our actions and we'll support the community. And that's pretty much it. And I love some of this shit. Fucking love this. This shit is, I mean, I'm not going to read this whole thing. If you know, you know. It's fucking genius. Uh, it's, uh, we, we, we apologize. <laughs> uh, oops, we got caught. <laughs> You see, at least when Cyberpunk, when Cyberpunk had that yellow shit, like it took a little bit of work. But when you make it this simple, it's like holding up a blank white piece of paper and then putting it out on the internet, man. Uh, just ev everybody's a shit now. The oh, my, this is my favorite, my favorite, my fucking favorite. Oh my god, fucking favorite. This is so good. <clears throat> I state my regret. You couldn't have memorized that. I could not because I do not feel it. Are you leaving? Okay, bye. Love you. <laughs> Love you, babe. Have fun. Oh, man. I really love when companies make these public public apologies because the comments are always so fucking good. <laughs> They're always just, just so, so good. So as it stands right now, Streamlabs is in a whole bunch of, uh, uh, a whole bunch of hot water. They're they're on the they're on the verge of being canceled. Um, a lot of people are switching over to Stream Elements and other services. Uh, I myself am using Streamlabs. Uh, I'll I'll probably wait and see what happens. I mean, this could also amount to nothing. They can make meaningful change. Who knows? Uh, I'll also say that I know the person who who previously owned the company, who started the company, actually built the site initially. Um, so <clears throat> so for me, it's like I don't care. I'll still go talk shit about the company. <laughs> I mean, he's a butt and everything, and I don't think he's really involved anymore, but still, man, somebody underneath he's fucking up. Fix it, fish sticks! Uh, how should we have reacted if memes wasn't a thing? What a bleak role that would have been. Exactly, exactly. Still using Streamlabs. I know! I know! God, oh! I know, there's just so many fucking things. It's just to move over. Well. Well. So, oh wait, uh, Ankara got fucked by them as well. Oh yeah, duh, there was another part of this. Yeah, I totally forgot. Yeah, oh, there's, there's more, there's more. Yeah, there's also, I mean, it wasn't just those two instances. Also, there was uh, this, uh, this guy right here, this artist. Uh, so on top of the slobs, I use one of my animations as a default alert. Uh, sure, cool, but I asked around four-ish years ago to please give credit as they didn't even ask to use it. The response was, it was a random gift they found online. Sure, they'll give credit. Uh, there still is none. Now, they have updated this, right? Um... They have, uh, you have helpers, Mike. This is setting up a whole new thing. This is crazy. This is a whole new alert system to set up. Like all the, all the overlays, all that shit. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. Let me, one thing at a time. Um, oh God, but God damn it. Anyways, uh, I'm glad I don't use slobs anymore. I stopped using it because it sucked. And then I went back to OBS. But then OBS starts sucking. And I end up switching to XSplit. And then XSplit starts sucking. So I end up moving on to something else. So anyways, back to this. Uh, yeah, there's there's just everybody. It was almost like they had their own personal, like, um, uh, 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 ethical instead of, like, sexual, like, Me Too movement, right? Where, like, everybody was like, oh, man, yeah, fuck slobs. I just never said anything before because I was afraid I was going to get shit on. So everybody jumped on board. Bam! Uh, and they got hit from every direction. So it's been a bad week for Streamlabs. It's been a really bad week for Streamlabs. Um, whether or not it'll amount to anything, who knows? Who knows? They, they, they're they rectifying it. They're move, removing OBS from the name. Uh, hopefully they give credit to all the artists and all that stuff. I mean... I mean, it sounds like they just they just threw the website together, didn't really give a care to any of the rules and ethics around borrowing people's work that we just found a GIF online. Um, just use Hypercam, that's right. That's right. Uh, uh, unrelated, what? Someone said I'm handsome? <laughs> sounds like you need to make your own and make sure it doesn't suck. That's right. I use Stream Elements OBS when I get around to working on my house battery. Dude, I mean, I, it's it sounds like I mean just to go back on the like you know make sure make a make your own and make sure it doesn't suck. Um, like it just sounds like any. I mean, we just talked about uh uh, what was it? I forget her fucking name. The fake the face cream, the the blue light face cream. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like everybody's partnering with somebody that ends up be, ends up turning into some kind of situation. Valkyrie, that's right. Thank you. Um, yeah, everybody, and so now, and then now, it's it's it's, uh, uh, it's Pokey and and Slobs. Even though she doesn't have a relationship with them, but because her face is on the front, she's getting shit on for it. Uh, it just, it just feels like just stop, just stop trying to partner with companies because <laughs> it's not, it's not working. <laughs> it's not working. They all, they all end up being bad somehow. So <clears throat> speaking of bad, speaking of bad dislikes, an update to dislikes on YouTube, the dislike counts will be private. The count will be private. But the button will still be there. So. I dislike this. That's right. Mash that dislike button. Let them know how you feel. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that, please. <laughs> Hit that button. <laughs> so. They're going to be removing dislikes. Now. I didn't think this was that big of a deal initially. Because I didn't really think about it. I had a lot of other stuff I was working on. Uh, I know a lot of people have some pretty strong opinions over whether or not dislikes are needed in this in in the YouTube community. Um, Linus was pissed off. Yeah, I've heard. I mean, it says, it says right here. It says we strive for a place for creators of all sizes of backgrounds. They're basically leaning on harassment as being the reason why they targeted harassment as the reason why they want to remove um this uh, the dislikes the dislike counts. So, I didn't think it was that big of a deal until I saw this tweet uh, pointing out that the first YouTube video ever to be posted uh, by Jared Kim, uh, which is which is him at the zoo. Have you guys ever seen this? This is legendary. The very first YouTube video. All right, so here we are in front of the uh, elephants. Um, cool thing about these guys is that, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts. And that's, that's cool. And that's pretty much all there is to say. <laughs> so, this is the co-founder, sorry, not this. Here we are. This is the, the co-founder uh, of, <clears throat> this is the co-founder of YouTube. Uh, and he came back to edit this video to voice his opinion on what he thinks about dislikes. And I thought his opinion, I thought was very valid. Um, in it, he discusses that if you, if you remove, if you remove the ability to, for people to immediately see and gauge whether or not a video is worth their time, then the entire platform suffers because of it. When I go to a video, if I'm looking for something, right like a tutorial video on something or whatever and i go to a video and i see that the ratio is like a one-to-one -one and there's a lot of votes on either side i know it's probably trash right i should probably not waste my time and go somewhere else look up yeah look, a repair video is a perfect example how am i supposed to know if a repair video is worth my time if i can't see and so they've already gone through and they made comments difficult to dig for on mobile. I don't know if you guys know that, but it's difficult. You have to like scroll all the way down, what are the side is all of them. They don't, it's not readily available anymore. Um, and now they're going to hide dislikes. It's going to make YouTube difficult to use for the casual user who could just get on there and just find something they're looking for real quick. So it says, why would YouTube make this universally dislike change? There is a reason, but it's not a good one and not one that will be publicly disclosed. Instead, there will be references to various studies, studies that apparently contradict the common sense of every YouTuber. The ability to easily and quickly identify bad content is an essential feature of user generated content platform. Why? Because not all user generated content is good. It can't be. And so he goes through and he says, yeah, you can't, you can't, you have to have bad with the good. It's just part of content. It's just part of how it works. <laughs> he says the process works and there's a name for it. The wisdom of the crowds. The process breaks when the platform interferes with it. Then the platform invariably declines. Does YouTube want to become a place where everything is mediocre? Because nothing can be great if nothing is bad. And he says here in business, there's only one thing more important than make it better. And that's don't fuck it up. So his, these are, these are some 
pretty sage words here. Again, this is the co-founder of YouTube. It's not just some fucking random dude, right? Like these, this, he's, he's right. Like, I mean, and, and a lot of people have made this point as well. Uh, removing the dislikes number because a small group, like arguably a very fucking small group is, is tar targeting and harassing uh, you know, individuals, whoever it is, is not a reason to remove it for everybody. It's a reason to come up with a way to, to stop those individuals being targeted or to stop that ability for people to brigade uh, ratings. <clears throat> small, a small but growing group of, 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 well, I mean, when you think about how many people use the site. <laughs> I'm sure Peeves loves the removal of public dislikes. Is, is his video still the number one dislike video on the site? I mean, that's that's the problem, right? Like, we know when something's shit by looking at it, and now we won't be able to tell. I'm sure there are promoted companies uh, who want to advertise or who want to put a video up, and then they get shit on, and now they're like, wow, I'm mad. So I'm going to lobby to have dislikes removed, so that way people can't tell if my video is shit. They should fix the harassment. Shut that down. Don't shut down our ability to create our own content. That's right. Yeah, they need to, the, YouTube is, was, is, still is a great platform. Um, it just needs, they just need to let us organically run it but they're not going to because youtube is not making a shitload of money and so they have to lean on their investors and their advertisers and kind of like bend to their their needs at times uh this is why a few ways for people to protest something some of us aren't on twitter and facebook mm -hmm. reminds me of building a pc video uh <laughs> that's right yes that's right pc video <laughs> fuck it a yeah you won't even be able to tell now uh now it's still it's still there like right now it still shows up 200 this was 226 thousand downvotes um <clears throat> but it's still it's this is still a problem that if they if they were to change it like it could have a negative impact uh on youtube over time uh, isn't this akin to judging a book by its cover i have no dog in this fight because i never looked at dislikes likes dislikes um but content should be judged on an individual basis, not what everyone tells me to think about it. I understand that. I understand what you're saying. But once you have enough people that have seen a video, and if you look at the ratio and say, okay, like this is a universally panned, or this is universally disliked, you can save yourself the time from discovering that yourself, right? If a video and, 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 and because you can see the ratio yourself, you can make the decision on what is the threshold for I will give this video a shot and what won't be worth your time. Whereas with YouTube stepping in and removing the dislikes number, the counts, you no longer have that ability to make that decision on your own. So in reality, you are now given less, less information and less power to choose than if you had the uh, dislikes visible to you um <clears throat> it's removed in batches i don't see dislikes count anymore yeah it's, it's it's going around right now it's 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 definitely uh rolling out slowly if i see a bad ratio i go to the comments and then close the video usually yep the alternative timeline where rebecca black's video didn't have a dislike bar <laughs> uh are you going to watch every video on a subject till you find the right one yeah exactly yeah pick the top two or three i can still see dislikes let me dislike one of mike's <laughs> shit uh, the public reaction to statements or shit like that yearly uh youtube review free ad time for them too as an ex-wild player i used to uh used to watch videos with more dislikes than likes so have your own choices that's right fixing the issue requires actual effort on their part it's easier for them to remove the dislike field from their video html template yeah so so yeah, this is a um, this is this is you know, it, it could it could threaten to destabilize the quality of content that's available on YouTube. And while YouTube does have a ton of shit product, there's still a lot of really good stuff on there. Every time I get on, so I have some kind of itch that I go to scratch by watching some other videos on some kind of project that I'm working on, like I don't know, learning how to solder these tiny little microprocessors and creating these little RGB controllers. Like I didn't know how to do that before. I went and watched a bunch of YouTube videos. If I didn't have a dislike button or number to like help me help guide me through, there's a ton of videos that I skipped because they were giving bad advice. <laughs> So what happens if somebody disables comments on their videos? That should be an automatic red flag, but I don't have dislikes and likes in order to tell me otherwise. DIY center blocks for desk raising. <laughs> it works. Jen says I'm going to stub the shit out of my toe one day, though. 
She's not. She's not convinced that I'm gonna. I'm gonna survive. Uh, uh, my toes are gonna survive this one. Uh, oh, what is uh, what a NKBHD? What a Mark ass Brownlee say? Let me see. Uh, it says, oh. <laughs> "Congrats, YouTube Rewind." On 2018, I hit three million likes. These people are really too love. <laughs> yes, yes. You see, this is the problem. People will see 3 million likes and they're going to be like, whoa, this video is great. This is a perfect example. Oh my God. Perfect example. Uh, from Linus and Mutahar to Moist, Critical, and Mike B, I have not heard a single indie creator have anything good to say about the removal of dislikes. It's another tone deaf fumble on the football field as YouTube, and there is not even another team playing against them. Fuck, that's fucking great, right? God damn. <laughs> Just <laughs> That's fucking great, exactly. Uh, 221 million to 3 million likes. Yeah, yeah, 23 million views to 3 million likes. It's a new dislike meter. Time to write an add on. That's exactly what I was thinking. Get an extension going that just shows you the ratio of likes or views to likes. And still, it would suck. This fucking sucks. Ah, man. Wow, man. Fucking <clears throat> Marquez Brownlee is fucking perfect. Fucking perfect example of that. So. While while uh, while YouTube's kind of stumbling a little bit with the whole dislikes thing, uh, Twitch is actually come on rolling out some pretty good stuff. If you're an affiliate, which I know a lot of you guys are, you guys already know this, but this is good news all around. I know there's some partners that are pissed off at this for some reason. I've heard there are partners that are pissed off at this for some reason. I don't understand why. It's I mean, more emotes the better. <laughs> like I mean, I follow a lot of people. I would love to have more access to more emotes. Come on, uh, this is huge. So they're adding emotes, uh, is it more emotes, more ways to connect. Um, they're adding five more emote slots, and I believe, yeah, like Top Show, there's one, it's like, it's at one, it's at nine total slots, uh, five of them, and then one uh, animated, right? Um, <clears throat> any emotes for all the streaming I do, that's right. Oh, never mind, it's probably more than one, because Top just posted a whole bunch more. <laughs> but good, man, we need more, for fuck's sake. Uh, affiliate, I got two viewers on my average when I stream. It's me and on my PC and my girlfriend on her phone. That sounds like quality. Just like that wide hug emote right there, there. Look at that. It's, yeah, zero slots. Fuck, Poppy. Gotta get on there. Let's go. Um, <clears throat> so, this is great news. This is great news for uh, people who are affiliates. Uh, I mean, fuck, good. You get more. Before it was like, what, one? You got like one or some shit? Uh, and then they raise that and they keep raising it. I think that's great. Uh, of course, it cascades. You know, they gave they gave us a whole bunch of extra uh, emote slots as well because they added five follower slots for us for partners. Um, and now I'm like now I'm sitting on I have like fucking like nine or ten, maybe even thirteen slots open. I I need a I need a lot of ideas for fucking emotes because it's a lot. Um, 19 total, five followers, channel only, nine standard emotes, five anime emotes. Fucking beautiful. Good. Good. Christmas emotes. Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. They also release everybody the emote uh, analytics portion of your dashboard. So if you go to your insights page, I can't show you. I think I, I think it's against the rules for me to show you. Plus, you guys can't see how much money I make. Uh, <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the rank 7,777 range. Um, but they'll give you some metrics and show you how which emotes are being used both in your site or in your page and also outside of your page. Uh, and I, I mean, I went through there and I was like, damn, like this is very, it's, I see that you guys love to use the nice animation, the animated nice and the animated automaton. Those are the two most used emotes outside of uh, my page. So something, something to keep in mind uh, of when I come, when I come around to make more animated emotes for, um, you know, for, for this, uh, for, uh, for this page but <clears throat> yeah that's dope yep so this you you can uh <laughs> so yeah you can you can go through and see your your metrics there was a there was a uh, a secondary site that would didn't handle that a third party site that would handle that uh but you know this is just have it on your page it's good this is the only email you'll ever need ever then use it i see the metrics <laughs> not gonna wait six months for these stats to build up no, you I mean it shows you it's a it's a rolling it's a rolling uh, a period of thirty days, so um oh actually you might be able to adjust that actually because I didn't try to adjust at the very top I just looked at the date on the thing anyways uh once you get thirty days then you'll know which ones are working and which ones aren't uh, but I would give us some more time just to kind of just to just just for your own benefit and make make informed decisions um <clears throat> so yeah good 
good shit. Uh, also, like I mentioned before, whenever whenever there's a tweet talking about emotes from Twitch, you always get a really really good selection of people who are making. Um, who are, who are who are animators or who are people who just make emotes, uh, emo artists uh, in the in the comments. They always spam these things. Um, so if you're looking for emotes uh, now that you have a whole bunch of extra slots, look at all this shit. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> if you're looking for some more uh, emotes, you could go um, and probably find one of these artists uh, who are spamming all these articles <laughs> for our benefit, though, right? I mean, you know, we we need new emotes. We got to get in there and get some more made. Uh, myself included, for fuck's sake. I just don't know what to put. Um, you talk to your girl, Noxie. Ah, oh, yeah, that's right, Noxie, huh? Hmm. Uh, I go to Draken a lot. I'm going to diversify a little bit. I said I go to Draken for something else, though. Um, <clears throat> that's right. Look at it. Wow, you guys, man, you guys busy. Dang. I'm going to add some more. More Darnell. <laughs> Subgirl flower emote. Man, no one's going to know what the reference is at. I got to clean up my emotes, too. Fuck, there's so much stuff to do. Don't worry, I always get the itch at the end of the year. I always get the itch at the end of the year. And then and then I uh, uh, I make a lot of changes, so we'll see. We will see. So, uh, moving on. What time is it? We've got time, right? Oh, yeah, we're good. Uh, <laughs> we're a little over. It's fine. Uh, so, the Game Awards, which is something that we cover, usually cover after they happen. And we talk a little bit about um, <laughs> any sugar dads that buy me emotes. <laughs> uh yeah, we usually cover it after the fact. Talk about some of the non-meat and uh, some of the winners and everything. Um, the categories are available. There are thirty categories available to you if you'd like to go through and vote. Um, I know that we don't like game awards, right? Like we're just—I mean, I know that we're just inherently against these things. But Jeff Cayley has been part of the scene for a really long time. And he, this is his baby. And so, like, I kind of want... I mean, I've I've been slow... I, initially, I was like, ah, oh, man, I want nothing to do with it. But this is not run by, you know, some corporate EA or something or, you know, Bobby. Uh, this is somebody who who has been part of the community forever. Um, no four is a five. Nope. You are wrong. So, <clears throat> as we go through, we see this is the best game, the game of the year. We got uh, uh, Death Loop, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts, Ratchet and Clank, uh, uh, Resident Evil Village. Uh, they have best game direction, they have best narrative, uh, best art direction, best score music, best audio design. There's Forza Horizon Five. Uh, they have best performance. They have uh, games for impact. I mean, they have, they, there's tons ongoing. Of course, they have ongoing indie. Uh, here we see Loop Hero. I know some of you guys are talking about that one. Also, Kina Bridge of Spirits. And then also Inscription, if you guys are into that kind of thing. <laughs> best mobile game. Best community support. Uh, there's just tons and tons and tons and tons of options. There's 30 categories. There's only half of them so far. So... Yeah, definitely. Kena, that's right. Kena, such a good game. Beautiful game. Beautiful, beautiful game. I didn't even finish it. It's fucking sad. <laughs> I can't, man. I can only take so much emotional torture in a short period of time. I watch, I watch Squid Game. The, or Squid Games. Uh, should be Squid Games, plural, right? There's multiple games. And oh my god, people told me that it was harsh. It was harsh. They were like, oh man, it's rough. They didn't tell me it was like heartbreaking. Heart breaking fucking christ just and by the way watch it with subs the dubs are, are horrendous i have never been someone to say that too you guys know you guys know me <laughs> watch it with 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 uh, with subs the dubs are just really bad uh now to simplify that list in terms of who got nominations and and for what uh uh bendy sales one of my favorite uh, uh industry people to follow uh <clears throat> has categorized it death loop nine nine nominations for death loop ratchet and clank six it takes two five we go all the way down we see uh kina at three um and then far cry six at three so a lot of other I mean, a lot of companies or a lot of games um that i haven't played <laughs> and then and then there's also most nominated publishers which i always think is kind of an interesting just to kind of see like who gets who has the most uh content out there that's making the most uh the make uh, it's getting the most nominations and we have um uh, 11 nominations for sony online then we have capcom nintendo uh and then we have 20 for xbox and bethesda so yeah this is pretty good numbers we'll see we'll see what's gonna happen i love cyberpunk so it's up there it's up there for me um 
I know how we all know Korean anyways. It's a good way to learn. Everyone says the Marvel and make Kylo. No, no spoilers. No spoilers. Who did the nominations? I didn't they do like a community like pick up on this? And Phil said there are still new studios being acquired. Yeah. From the Game of the Year nominees, I've only played Dread. Yeah, that's another thing too. It's like there's when I look at the list of the game of the uh, game of the year, like I have I played any of these games? I have not played any of these games. So for me, it's like you know what? This is the same thing that happens anytime there's like uh, every year when there's uh, uh, I don't know Grammys or Oscars or any kind of a, like uh, mainstream award ceremony. I always whenever you watch or you see who won, I'm like who? Like I what movie? I'll add that to my list. I'll watch those movies next year. I'm always like that. I'll watch those movies next year. <laughs> Just never fucking do. <laughs> Ever. That, yeah, dirty lots. Exactly. You play Psychonauts 2, but I heard a lot of buzz about It Takes 2 and Death Loops. Yeah, I've heard a lot about Death Loop as well. Um, but you know, I just haven't played it. How come the games I play aren't up there, man? It's because small indie games. <laughs> small indie games. We play all we play all the hipster ass games here, and then we talk shit about all the big companies. That's what we do. That's that's pretty much my uh uh, my my motto is how things work around here. Uh, so behind on games, I'm still playing through games from the before times. I know, God, because uh, Don't Starve is ten years old. I know, huh? We play it's a ten years ongoing game. Come on. Uh, uh, what didn't you tell me? What, why didn't you tell me about expense? What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> the companies tend to do pretty shitty things. True. Birds of the Year, Hideo uh, Kojima, nominated by Jeff Kaylee. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, I mean, who's gonna argue that though? Like. <laughs> Who's going to say that Hideo Kojima does not deserve some kind of recognition for some of the weird shit that he puts out there into the world? Lifetime Achievement Awards, shit like that. Uh, but that does it for the news. That's 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 all we got. The Bay Award goes to Kojima. G4 has been some fun in the past couple days. That's right. G4 did start uh, uh, start up again on Twitch. Not partner with Twitch, just just streaming on Twitch, um, uh, recording, uh, they're, they're doing, they brought back like uh, attack of the show and all that stuff as well. Right. I want, I tuned in for some of it. I never really watched G4 TV. Uh, I, I didn't watch any TV for like eight years. So <laughs> I was pretty out of the loop on, on some of this stuff. Uh, but I know that a lot of people have, um, so they really knew as well. Dying glad I made it in time today. Hey, I appreciate all you guys making it for the news. You guys are the best. Thank you so much chat you guys are awesome hanging out here with me today it's friday go do bad things don't get caught and fuck bobby Kotick.